Mr. Johnson back with another video on solving quadratic equations by factoring. Uh, the previous video we looked at showed when a was 1 and how to deal with a polynomial and factor it down and find the solutions um, for parabola, so they were quadratic. And now we're looking at quadratic equations where the a is not 1, where it's either going to require us to use a GCF to factor and or our guess check method that we used in our factoring review video. So again, if there's any struggles with factoring, go back and look at the factor review video I made. There's some examples that show the guess check method and ways to increase efficiency and uh, save you some time. So we're gonna take a look here. We've got um, four examples on this slide and we're gonna be solving quadratic equations by factoring. Uh, for every example we do, we're gonna look for a GCF first or we're gonna just use our guess check method. So if you look at one, we've got zero equals four X squared minus eight X. So again, if there's two terms, we use some different methods besides our trinomial pieces. And the first thing we should look for is, is there a GCF between the two terms? Well, I noticed that four goes into both terms, four and eight, and each term also has an X. So as we uh, work to factor this down, we can actually break this down. That's supposed to be a zero there. Uh, and I can take out a 4x, and then in parentheses, if I divide 4x squared by 4x, I get x, and then I have minus 8x, or I bring the minus down, and 8x divided by 4x is just 2. So I have 0 equals 4x times quantity x minus 2. The nice thing with this one is now I'm ready to solve it. So I go to my zero product property, and I go 4x equals 0, and I do x minus 2 equals 0. I know that the first uh, term here, even when I divide it zero by four, it's gonna still keep this solution as zero. So I know X equals zero. And the other one is if I just add two to both sides to solve for X, I get X equals two. So my solutions to number one is X equals zero or positive two. And again, the way to check these is just put the expression on the right side here, four X squared minus eight X into Desmos and your parabola should cross x values at zero and two. And you can check that with any of these answers here. Now, as you look at number two, um, it looks like we'd have to use guess check right off the bat. You could do that, but it's always best to check for a GCF first because I notice all three terms on the left side are even. So a two will go into all of these terms. And by taking a two out, that eliminates, when we uh, <clears throat> factor this, our a value will then be one on the inside, and we can use some easier factoring methods. So what I would do first here is take two. I just can't use that line there. So I'm gonna go two and then divide everything by two here because I can't take an X out of everything, but I have two and I have X squared. Four X divided by two or half of four X is two X. Then I have minus six over two, which is minus three equal to zero. So I'm gonna keep the two out in front and then I'm gonna factor and say, well, what multiplies to three and adds to two? Um, and it's got to multiply to negative three. So I would need three and one. So I'm gonna have two parentheses, X plus X minus. Again, no need for guess check because in the parentheses in front of X squared is a one. To add to positive two, my big number three gets the plus and then one gets the minus. And uh, recall that if two is equal to zero, two does not contribute an answer. Only X's give us answers to these equations. So I'm gonna take my opposite of three. So that'll equal negative three for X. My opposite of minus one is positive one. And these would be my two solutions for this equation. I could still do guess check and get them that the issue is that the problem would not be factored completely. Um, and that might cause a little bit of trouble. So. As we look at number three, we have 4x squared plus 12x plus nine equals zero. There is no GCF now, unlike the first two examples. So now we would wanna set up and do our guess check method. So our two parentheses equal to zero, link inner, link outer, target a positive 12x, and the sign in front of the nine is a plus. So I need a sum of positive 12x. Okay, so I write sum below the 12x. Now, um, if you notice the a and the c values here, the four is our a, nine is the c, are both perfect squares. So sometimes these kind of examples, uh, we, we would wanna start with their roots first. So we want it with four, the square root of four is two, and for nine, the square root of nine is three. 
So I would want to put the first term, start with 2x and 2x, and the last terms do 3 and 3. And if I link them, I think I'm going to get 6x and 6x for my inner and outer, and that will add to 12 as a sum. Okay, so sometimes if you think of perfect squares, sometimes, and it goes with when I say the guess check method, always start on the inside factors and work your way out. The roots would be the innermost factors to start with. So we would naturally start with them anyway. So I'm going to put 2x here, 2x here. Because remember, these first terms have to multiply to 4x squared. And then in the back terms, I'm going to take the root of 9, which is 3. So I'm going to put 3s here and 3 here. And 3 times 3 gives me 9. Okay, I know that they add, they multiply to a positive 9 and add to a positive 12. So it's plus and plus. And so when I multiply my inner, I get 6x, positive 6x. My outer, 2x times 3, is 6x again. And these two things here will add up to 12x, which will provide me with the correct factors. Now, if you notice, the factors are identical. You see how they're both 2x plus 3 and 2x plus 3? So I only have to solve one of them. So if I have 2x plus 3 equals 0, to solve, remember, I want to get 2x alone, so I minus 3 on each side. And I have 2x equals negative 3. And then I finish by dividing both sides by 2, and I get my answer. Now, it's only one answer, okay? I'm going to write over here x equals negative 3 halves or negative 1.5. I only get one answer, and the reason is because on my graph, only the vertex is touching the x-axis, okay? So because these answers are repeated, if you imagine a U-shape, the vertex is right on the x-axis, only touching once, and that's at negative 1.5. All right, I want you to, I'm going to have a uh, pause for a second, take a look at four and determine, should you do a GCF first or should you do guess check? Okay, because if you look, I think you'll see what you need to do. So three seconds, I'm going to come back and tell you what I would do. All right, so as you look at four, I would ask myself, does five go into everything? Five goes into five, five goes into 20, five goes into 15. And if I divide out by five, I can shrink things down to where I do not have to use guess check. So I would do that. I would factor out a GCF of five out of each term. So I would have x squared left when I take five x squared divided by five minus 20 divided by five, which is four x plus 15 divided by five, which is three equal to zero. Okay, now I'm solving. The number out in front, remember, I really don't need if I'm solving. I'm just trying to find what x is so the five, we can essentially cross off here because it's going to do nothing for us for the answer. So I've got my two factors now. I need two numbers that multiply to positive three and they have to add to negative four. So I know it's x minus x minus because two negatives multiply to my positive and two negatives add to a larger negative. Three is prime and the only factors are three and one. And then if I go to solve the factors, remember just opposites of each factor with the numbers. Opposite of minus three is positive three. Opposite of minus 1 is positive 1. So x can equal 3 or positive 1 as we work those out. All right, so if you said factor with GCF, right on. That's the way to approach number 4. Okay, as we move on, we've got a few more examples. Um, and we'll see what time permits us to do here. But uh, with number 5, we've got 4x squared minus 25. This is another one where I recognize 4 and 25 as being perfect squares. And it's only, a, we have an AX squared and a C term, so we don't have a, a B term. Um, and, and with this one, you just want to use the roots to factor. Okay, so I've got 0 equals, I'm going to go right to my two parentheses. The square root of 4X squared is 2X and 2X. Put the 2 there in front of the X. And then for 25, its root is 5 and 5. And then it's... You still have to have the B term add to zero, so you need opposites. So with the factors, you need opposite factors. So we have 2x plus 5 and 2x minus 5 equals zero. And uh, now we have to solve each of those. So hopefully I've got enough room here. Zero equals 2x plus 5. Zero equals 2x minus 5. And you might find some tricks to kind of speed up this process here, but we're going to minus 5 on both sides. So we have negative 5 equals 2x divided by 2. So I have negative 5 divided by 2. That'll be one answer. 
And I'll, I'll clean this up here in a little bit here. So I'm going to add 5 on this equation. And I have 5 equals 2x. And it looks like our answers will just be opposites of each other, positive 5 halves and negative 5 halves. So I'm going to write up over here x equals, I'm going to use a plus or minus symbol so I don't have to rewrite it twice. Positive 5 halves or minus 5 halves. That's what plus and minus mean. And it's a way to write two answers with just one fraction. And if you type this into um, Desmos 4x squared minus 25, you'd have a parabola that would be split right on the y axis. Um, and you can see that 5 halves and negative 5 halves are equidistant from the y axis here. All right, so 6, 2x squared plus 3x minus 35. Uh, no GCF, we're going to have to do guess check, and uh, we'll set that up right over here. Link inner, link outer. I have positive 3x, and the minus here means it's a difference of 3x. Okay, and again, that's always our mindset is what's our mindset? Are we trying to for a sum of 3x or a difference of 3x? It really helps us in this process. 2x squared has to be broken up in the first term, so I need 2x and 1x. And then start with the inner factors of 35 with 5 and 7. And I'm already thinking if I multiply 5 to 2, uh, then I'll have 7 for the other one. And that'll give me 10 and 7, which will have a difference of 3. So to explain that, I would put my 5 here, and I would put my 7 there. Uh, and I'm not worrying about signs right away. I'm just trying to find the right values that are to give me two numbers that are 3 away from each other. So 7 and x is 7x. 2x times 5 is 10x. And if you look at those two numbers, they're 3 they're three x's away from each other. I know what the minus 35, one parenthesis is still positive, one's negative. I need the 10x to be positive, and I need the 7x to be negative. Remember the inner, the 7x, the sign goes to the left. So the minus 7x goes, minus goes left. The plus from the 10x will go to the right. So it'll be plus five. And now I just have to solve those factors. Okay, so I need to take two x minus seven equals zero. I'm going to add 7 to both sides, and then I'll divide that by 2 to find my first answer. If I cut 7 in half, I have 3.5, or you can keep it 7 over 2. And my other answer is x plus 5 equals 0, which is just negative 5. So my answers here, I'll write right up by my face. x equals 7 over 2, or it could equal minus 5. Okay? For the sake of time here, um, again, I just have 15 minutes to record on this. I'm going to help set up 7 and 8 and then give you a try and then uh, or have you give it a try and then plug them into Desmos to see if your answers are right. You may Desmos may give you a decimal and, for example, you'd have to divide 7 by 2 in your calculator to get 3.5. But uh, let's set up 7 and 8 and that way you can so uh, factor it, solve it, and then check it with Desmos. If I take a look here, I always want to keep x squared positive. So I want to move everything to the left in number 7. So 29x is going to, we're going to move that term over to the other side and place it in between the 4x squared and the 7. My algebra step to do that is just to minus 29x on both sides. And then we're going to rewrite this. So I'm going to have 4x squared minus 29x now because it's moved sides across the equal sign. Plus 7 equals 0. And then you would go right into your guess check setup. Okay, you're trying to find, we have, we're trying to get them to add to minus 29x. And the plus here is a sum, so it's a sum of 29. So keep your inner and, inner and outer values under 29 as you're trying to figure that out. And a hint, don't use 2 and 2 for 4 because 29 is odd. So do 4x and 1x. And then I think with 7 and 1, you'll be able to find that. For number 8, again, I see my x squared term on the left side. Th negative 3x squared is negative. Come on, mouse, where are you? Can't see the little dot here. Anyways, I want my x squared to be positive. So I'm actually going to add this to both sides of my equal sign. I always want to keep the x squared term positive. So I have 0 and then write it in standard form. 3x squared minus 4x minus 4. Okay, and then set up guess and check again because there's no GCF and factor that out. So hopefully you can finish those up. And uh, if you're doing that, you're in good shape. 
Um, good luck with your factoring and solving. Stay in touch, and uh, we will see you soon.